Hello guys and welcome to a new video. If you're watching this, you probably got a link in my Twitch chat because I'm too lazy to answer your questions directly. So if you are here thanks to Twitch, hello. If you're not, go follow me on Twitch. Let's get started with the audio. Audio is very important. In the majority of games, especially FPS shooters or MOBAs in third person or other games that I'm not going to mention because they are unimportant. So let's check out some settings on Windows and let's start with the pretty simple stuff. So if you navigate on the bottom right of your computer, there should be this icon. Maybe it's hidden right here, or maybe not. There's going to be the settings, spatial sound. Uh, most of the modern games have a lot of virtualized audio, and they use a lot of post-processing to make the audio sound better. This may conflict with a lot of Windows uh, systems. So the best way to deal with this is to turn off spatial sound. So you're going to have the pure audio from the game and not Windows interfering with it. Interf interf you know what I mean. Odila, the audio of my computer is too low. I have good headphones. I have this and that. Okay, I got you covered. There is an issue with Windows. If your motherboard is not pre-amplified and it doesn't have a built-in audio booster because it's not a creator motherboard, it's, it came with a pre-built computer, I got you covered. Check this out. There is a program called FX Sound. I refuse to call them app. It's free, so you don't have to pay. How cool is that? You download, put it on your desktop, because otherwise you're not going to find it, and you install it. After you installed it, you can mess around with a lot of settings. I use a physical mixer, so I don't need like presets or anything because everything I do is uh, built-in hardware. Now you have a lot of settings that for some reason it doesn't let me touch, but yeah. As you can see, you can boost, uh, increase overall volume and balance with responsive processing. So you can boost your Windows volume to hell with this. And every time you over on top of one of these little, um, this, it was going to give you a pretty detailed description of what this does and now you can leverage it to your advantage. So yeah, go install the program and you're welcome. So for, why do I always do this thing with my hand? Whatever. For the next step, we're going to have to mess around a lot with the NVIDIA control panel. I mean, a lot is a little bit of an exaggeration, but if you are not familiar with the, with the software, you're going to be like, oh, what is this? What is that? Don't worry, I'm here. I'm going to guide you through it. If you have an AMD card, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know anything about AMD, so... Maybe somebody else made another tutorial. Anyway, so for the next step, we're going to be opening the NVIDIA control panel. It's usually here. There's like this little symbol. Go away. This little symbol right here. You click on that and it's going to take a week and a half to pop up the control panel, which is right here. Okay, it's going to tell you what, what GPU you have. It's going to tell you like uh, how old you are, where do you live, and so on and so on. So for the first setting that we have to change, it's this one. There is a little bit of a preview right here, right? With this thing turning around since 1998 or something. The first setting that you want to change is uh, instead of let the 3D application decide of use the advanced 3D image settings, you can use use my prefer my pref my preference performance. So you can slide between performance and quality. Obviously, if you put it on quality, it's gonna have like a less jack edges, but the more you go the more you're going to have like an ed, uh, a jagged edge image. Uh, In-game is barely noticeable. Trust me on this one. So switch from quality to performance and just click apply. Now the second tab is manage 3D settings. These are the global settings. So your computer is going to use these settings for everything. Every game, every, you know, everything. You know what everything means? Or you can do program specific, but it's very advanced and some settings can mess around your system. So don't touch anything. You just go global and it is what it is. We go all the way down, right? And low latency mode. Now, some games give you a little bit of a screen tearing slash ghosting, depending on like what monitor you have. So I would recommend to keep this one off if you don't have a really, really good monitor. But if you do, just go ultra if you have the option. Now for the max frame rate, the majority of monitors are not going to be like 240 frames. It's, it's become more common in 2023, but like a lot of people do have 140 or 185, 165. I don't know, there's some weird values, 165, I think. The rule of thumb to get less ghosting and less screen tearing is to go here, go on. And if you have a 240 hertz, you go 237. You always have to go three points lower than what your monitor max value is. If it is 144, it's going to be 141 and so on and so on. Just, just remember to take three points out of the equation. 
Now, the monitor technology is that if you have a G-Sync monitor, you can just go G-Sync compatible. If you do have a free sync monitor, NVIDIA made so that it's compatible. So you can select a G-Sync compatible even if you have a free sync monitor. So don't be afraid to just go G-Sync compatible. The next setting that we're going to check is this one, which is the most important one. If you go to power management mode and you go prefer maximum performance, yes, your system is going to consume a little bit more power, but you're going to have stable voltage and consequentially, I'm probably pronounced that wrong, better performance. The next setting is a uh, preferred refresh rate. Now, highest available means that it's going to use the highest available of your monitor. So just go with that one. Texture filtering quality. You can switch all the way from quality, high quality, performance, high performance. Of course, if you go on quality, you're playing like on 1080p, you may notice something in some games that they use very low resolution textures, but modern games really don't. So you can go safely on high performance. I promise you're not going to notice the difference. And then you click apply. There is a very interesting thing to say about, again, then, about the NVIDIA control panel and NVIDIA drivers in general. Every time you update your drivers, your NVIDIA drivers, they're going to go on top of the old drivers. You can do clean installs, but you're never going to clean the system properly. Why is that? I don't know. Ask NVIDIA. People have been complaining about this since NVIDIA cards are a reality, so it is what it is. But there is a solution. So if you didn't get a new system, or if you feel like your system is underperforming, right, there is another program that you can download. It's called DDU, Display Driver Uninstaller. With this software, you can clean up your system without having to restall Windows from scratch. You can delete uh, CPU drivers, uh, graphics card drivers, and audio drivers. So if you're switching from another, like another mixer to another, you can clean it up. So let's download the, the program and let me show you how it works. So you go into the website right here. I'm going to put the link in the description anyway. Display driver uninstaller. You click download and you download it, surprisingly. Now here in the NVIDIA website, you can see that we have this menu. I'm going to post the link in the description, like I said earlier, so don't worry. You're going to choose your product, GeForce, the series, so series 30, 40, 10, or whatever. In this case, I have a 40 series. Make sure you don't select notebook. I mean, as long as you don't have a notebook, otherwise select notebook, obviously. Then you choose your graphics card, your system, so Windows 10. I know it's in Italian, but let me do a magic. Ta -da. And then the download type. Make sure it's game ready drivers. Okay, then you can go research and it's going to bring you exactly at the page of the latest driver. Then you click on download and you're going to have them in your desktop. Once you downloaded the program, you're going to have to extract the folder with WinRare or WinZip or whatever you have installed in your computer. So if you click on this one, you're going to go on extract. And it's going to pop this little folder right here. I have a very old version, 2021, because I'm lazy. And I'm pretty sure the new one is better. But yeah, you click on display driver uninstaller and it's going to pop this window. Updates that I said no. No. Okay. No. Oh my God. Please. Okay. The best way to do this is to go in safe mode. If you don't go in safe mode, you may have some conflicts and some uh, registry errors. So you have to fix your registry. And I don't want to make a video about that. So put in safe mode. If you don't know how to do it, YouTube is your friend. So on the right, you can choose the device type, audio or GPU, right? So we're going to clean the GPU. You go GPU and you have three options. Clean and restart, clean and do not restart, clean and shut down if you have to install a new graphics card. So if you clean the computer, obviously you click here. You let it do its thing. I'm not going to do it because it's going to crash my computer right now. But when it's done doing its thing, you can reboot your computer. When you reboot your computer, your computer is going to look horrible. The resolution is going to be horrible because you don't have any graphics driver installed. So what you got to do is uh, before you do this, you download, like I said before, the latest NVIDIA drivers. For the next step, we're going to be talking about MSI Afterburner. Adela, I don't have an MSI card. It doesn't matter. It's a piece of software that works with every GPU that is NVIDIA and also not NVIDIA, I'm pretty sure, but that's for another video. What MSI Afterburner does is it makes you unlock the real power of your GPU. There are two kinds of GPUs, Founders Editions that they come from NVIDIA directly and aftermarket PCB. So MSI, ASUS, ROG Strix, don't buy that, TUF, a lot of other brands, Kingpin, rest in peace, AVGA, rest in peace. Those are all aftermarket PCBs. And they have one thing that is very important, uh, the difference from Founders Edition GPUs. These aftermarket PCBs are meant to be overclocked. So you, you're spending extra money compared to a Founders Edition. And if you ever wondered the price change, that's why is 
Founders Editions are cheaper because it's more of a collectible and a baseline for that GPU. Aftermarkets are built by secondary brands in licensing with NVIDIA to make the, their vision of the GPU. And that comes with selected chips, uh, selected, you know, uh, transistors, handmade stuff, and so on and so on to guarantee the best performance. And that's why they are more performing than a Founders Edition. So if you have a PCB, an aftermarket PCB, the reality is that you have to overclock them or at least set them to the maximum potential. The way to do so is with MSI Afterburner. So let me show you how we do it, all right? So we move to the website, which is msi.com, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to post it in the description. And you download Afterburner. I click download. It's going to save it, whatever. And then we open the program together. So this is what my MSI Afterburner looks like because I changed the settings and the visuals. So if you go all the way right with these arrows, you can see that you can change the user interface and you can choose whatever skin you want. There's plenty of them, but just, I think this one is the simplest one and the cleanest. So I stick with this one. If you want to follow along, maybe, you know, switch to the same skin. And we go all the way back. We go in general and you have to enable all the settings that I have enabled. So start with Windows. Don't worry, it's very soft. It's not going to make your computers lower. Synchronize settings for similar graphics processors. Uh, enable hardware control, uh, monitoring, enable low level IO driver. This, all of this has to be enabled. All of it. Okay. And then copy user mode. Standard MSI, okay? There are a lot of like advanced overclocking settings, but we're not getting into overclocking today. We're just telling you how to use the true potential of your graphics card. That's why you spent a thousand plus euros. So you can see the mine has no overclock whatsoever. The first settings that is the, probably the most important and probably the only one that you have to check is this one. Power limit. If your power limit is not at the max, the graphics card is going to have some hiccups. Now, are they perceivable by you? Probably... Not really, by, but by your game, they are. You can also mess around with like temperature limit. For example, if you are, you know, living in a very cold place, you can raise this. Uh, you can put the fans in auto or uh, manual. So you can put them at the full speed whenever you want. You will see the, the temperature going down quite fast. See? Not even a second is already two degrees down, three degrees down, four degrees down. So if you have issues of overeating, you can crank the fan speed to the maximum. And this is going to make all the difference, I promise you. But I have it in auto because I, I play with an open case, so it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't overheat as much. Now, these two settings are overclock settings. Now, Dela, can I hurt my computer with overclock? Not really, because your computer is not going to boot if you mess around these settings. Like, worst case scenario, you're just going to, you know, crash your computer and it's going to reset everything and you have to do everything again from the NVIDIA control panel and so on and so on. If you're not an expert overclocker or you don't know anything about this, you can either watch my old video or don't touch them at all. I promise you. If you have an older GPU, maybe you can find tutorials on how to get a little bit more out of them. There is also an overclock testing mode that you can scan to see if your overclock is safe. But again, I wouldn't recommend touching anything if you don't know what you're doing. You still cannot hurt your system, but you know, if it's running fine, why touching things? Don't touch things, okay? Settings that you have to put up, power limit. You put it from whatever to the max, you apply, you save, and you close. And that's about it. For the last steps, we're going to be messing around with uh, the Windows settings. Because, yeah, you also have to set up your Windows. Because your Windows is your worst enemy. Windows is everybody's enemy. So we've got to be setting Windows in a way that is going to allow your computer to run how it's supposed to run. So let me show you how to. So in the Windows symbol, this thing on the bottom left, you're going to go and type directly power settings. It's going to be power sleep settings. And you have this thingy right here. So you have a sleep... Uh, screen we don't care so on the right right here additional power setting haha we click on that and we open this screen right here so there's something to be specified here these settings are highly dependent on two factors your power supply and your motherboard so if your motherboard does not allow for high performance or ultimate performance, then you're not going to have the settings and you're very unlucky. But if you do have them, the choice will be ultimate performance. You click on that, provide ultimate performance on Iger Hand PCs. You just click, you apply, or you don't even have to apply, and you just close the window. I love Windows 10. So intuitive. Now, the second thing that you may want to check is called the game bar. So... If you type your game bar, it's going to show you this. Now, by default, uh, this will be on. 
uh, which is a tragedy. Because this thing is always running in the background, is messing with your performance. It may record automatically highlights in some games. You want to turn it off, guys. Just turn it off from on to off and forget about it. Because nobody in their right mind uses Xbox Game Bar. And that was it, guys. So I'm going to add some links in the description for other useful tools. Some of these tools are going to help you. Dela, I don't know the name of my motherboard. Dela, I don't know the name of my RAM, for example. I need to check. I don't know what GPU I have. I don't know anything. Okay, I got you. I got you. I'm going to post a link in the description for this program right here. Let me show you. The first program I'm going to showcase is called CPU-Z. You're going to download it for your system. So don't forget to check if you have a 32 and a 64. It says it's in Windows settings in Informations. It's pretty easy to find. If you don't know, YouTube is your friend because I am lazy. You can also download, you know, some sponsored version, but it changes nothing. So, you know, it is what it is. What this tool does eh, is going to tell you exactly all the components that you have. CPU, main board, model of the main board, memory, right? DDR4, dual, blah, blah, blah. These are pretty bad timings, by the way. Graphics card and so on. So if you're struggling in finding uh, those informations, uh, there you go. You can use this program. It's called CPU-Z. It's completely free, completely free, and it's going to solve your issues. Now, the second program that I want to be talking about is this one, Core Temp. Yeah, why would I need Core Temp? Because it can tell you a lot about your CPU temperatures. So I already installed it in my computer. Of course, you click download. The links is going to be in the description. But if you go CPU, no, Core Temp, you will see that these are my current temperatures for my CPU, which is not bad for this kind of overclock. Ha, huh. good job me. But yeah, it can tell you if your CPU is overheating, if that's the reason why your computer is crashing and so on and so on. Maybe you want to tweak your fan, what? Maybe you want to tweak your fans a little bit to see if you can solve this issue of overheating or maybe you want to change your thermal, you know, compound paste on the CPU cooler. But these are two very useful pieces of software. So don't sleep on them and, you know, download them. They are free. And that was everything that I have to teach you for this video. If you find this video helpful, please consider, you know, subbing on the YouTube, following on Twitch, and enjoy the rest of my content. Thank you so much for watching. i see you guys in the next video, which is probably going to come in another year or two.